All right, uh, the next two sections, we're going to kind of jump back and forth because some of these ideas, I think, feel better after we do 3-5. And so we're going to kind of jump back and forth. But 3-4 is about position. So where are you in relation to your population? Or where is this individual in relation to the population? So we've got something called a z-score. And we have percentiles, quartiles. We're going to talk about how we can find outliers. So uh, z-scores, the basic question is, if I have two different individuals, how could I compare them if they're not from the same population? So um, I have an example here. Uh, I'm trying to remember where this is from. I think it was from Macy's website. Um, two different pairs of jeans, Levi's, Calvin Klein. Obviously, Levi's is cheaper. Um, they're both are on sale. But then the question is, all right, so which is a better deal compared to their peers. I mean, compared to other Levi's jeans, is that a good deal? Compared to Calvin Klein jeans, is that a good deal? There, are, of course, there are lots of different ways to describe what's the best deal. You could just do what's the largest percent discount. That's fine. You could just say, well, which one's cheaper? That's fine too. But we're just saying, okay, compared to other Levi's jeans, is this a cheap price? Compared to other Calvin Klein's, is this a cheap price? So we need some information, and I have the average prices for both. Uh, if we do a little visual, um, both are below the mean price, and the Calvin Klein's a little further below. So from that we might say, well, you know, the Calvin Klein seems to be a better deal because compared to the average Calvin Klein gene price, um, this particular one is farther below that. Um, you may guess, though, that I wonder if there's more variability, though. If there are some really cheap Calvin Kleins or really expensive Calvin Kleins, maybe they're not spread out the same. So we might dive a little bit deeper and look at the standard deviation. Uh, so you can see that the Levi's jeans, basically as a, as a consequence of their cheaper price, aren't spread out as far. Um, and so if we look at the mean of 43.12, I've got bars here representing number of standard deviations. Oops. So the 34.99 is, is almost two standard deviations, 1.6 standard deviations below the average. Whereas the Calvin Klein is about one standard deviation below. So again, this isn't a perfect way to compare them, but you could say, well, in terms of the number of standard deviations, the Levi's one is more standard deviation below the mean. And again, it's just an option. It might not be the best way, but just kind of using this to illustrate these ideas. Oh. So um, the formulas here for the z-score, uh, basically you take the observation and see how far it is from the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. Whether it's population or sample, we'll call those both z-scores. They're, they're not technically both z-scores, but they're very similar. Uh, so the key here, and this is really, really, really important. I'm going to test you on this more than once and expect you to really understand this about what the z-score represents, that it's the number of standard deviations from the mean. So if we go back to that graphic, um, that Levi's gene is 1.6 standard deviations below the mean. That's the z-score. And the, the Calvin Klein is 0.9 below the mean. That's the z-score. All right, uh, percentiles. So percentiles say, basically cutting it up into percents, but the percentile is the percent that are below. So P25, the 25th percentile, means 25% are below that particular observation. That's what percentile means. Uh, quartiles, quarters, split the data up into quarters. So you have the first quartile has 25% below. The second quartile, which is the same as the median, has 50% below third quartile and then the maximum. So quartiles split the data up into quarters, essentially. Okay, uh, a couple more things. We are going to touch on some of the outlier ideas from 3.4, but we're going to jump to 3.5 now and talk about the five number summary and box plots. So the five number summary, what we call the five number summary, are these five numbers. Minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, maximum. So if I ask you to find the five number summary, that is it. Find those five numbers. Uh, box plots. You may have heard of these. Box and whisker. Box. There's something else. 
something else they're called too, but a uh, box plot. Um, what it does, if you're doing it by hand, you've got evenly labeling out um, the horizontal axis, whatever that happens to be. You label the first quartile, median, and third quartile, and draw a box around it. There's your box. And then the box and whisker, as it's sometimes called, you do whiskers out on either side to the minimum and maximum. So that is a box plot. Um, there are different versions of the box plot. Um, and so one version identifies outliers. So I have three different graphs here showing three different distributions. Uh, you can see there are slightly different distribution shapes. You can see the one on the far uh, left kind of bell-shaped, a little slightly maybe left skewed, but not bad. The one in the middle definitely um, looks pretty symmetric, but it has that outlier down there. So if this is exam scores, this is one student that did really poorly on that exam. And here, pretty symmetric, but it seems more condensed. And you can see here that that middle box is bigger here because there's more observations kind of right here, whereas this one, um, they're really condensed in the middle. There's most of them right around 70. So if we look, if we had to guess one of these, which appears to be an outlier, it's pretty clear that it's that middle one that has that really small observation over on the left. So the question is, how can we identify that outlier? How are we going to pick it up? So um, the basic principle is that compared to where these middle 50% are, the Q1, median, Q3. This one is very far from that. And so that's the basic idea that we're going to use as one way to identify outliers. It's not perfect. There's no rule for what makes an outlier. We are going to have a guideline that we will use that's pretty standard to identify outliers. Uh, what we're going to do is find what we call the interquartile range, which is the third quartile minus the first quartile. Uh, and then we'll find what we'll call the lower fence, which is going to be this first quartile, and then subtract one and a half of these interquartile ranges. And that's our lower fence. So the interquartile range, and if we do one and a half of those, that puts us down here. Upper fence, very similar. Take the upper quartile and do one and a half of those. Uh, and then anything that's outside of that we'll call an outlier. And so we have that outlier over on the left. And so we'll, you can draw what's called a modified box plot, um, which has cuts the fence off and disconnects and stops here. It doesn't connect to the fence necessarily unless the fence is an observation, but it stops at the next closest and then puts a star or an asterisk or a dot or whatever outside um, to show that outlier. So basically box plot. Q1, median, Q3, that's the box. You have you, you draw your fences. If there are any outliers, you put them outside of that. And then you connect to the, the minimum, and in this case, the next highest value. That would be, in this case, um, not the upper fence. There would be a gap here between that highest value and the fence. OK, cruising along. Oh, yeah, this is my one of my favorite comics here. Uh, I'll let you just read it. <laughs> Always makes me laugh. I'm a sucker for a math humor, though. All right, I think I wanted to try some of these things in Stack Crunch, but I feel like this video is really long. So I'm going to stop here and we'll focus on Stack Crunch in class. Uh, if you have any questions on it uh, after going through the homework, kind of playing around in there, looking at the help files. Um, a lot of this stuff is just in a drop-down menu. Um, so, and you know what, let me just do a couple while I'm here, because I did have it open. So I've got